Hello, I'm Paul Donovan, and for my final Economics from Gardening Leave video, I'm looking at the issue of big data. Data has changed enormously over the course of my career. When I started as a young Japanese economist in the early 90s, one of my main tasks was to copy numbers from the Bank of Japan's monthly statistical bulletin into a Lotus 123 spreadsheet. Nowadays, we have big data. Big data is basically the automatic electronic collection of very, very large amounts of information from many different sources, generally through things like web scrapes. For example, searching across hundreds of thousands of websites in order to get pricing information. Big data allows us to see both the woods and the trees. We can see lots and lots of individual data points, but with big data and computing power, we can also see the collective bigger picture that comes from all those disparate information sources. But big data does come with some challenges. The first problem with big data is it might actually do what it says. A lot of people claim that big data is more timely than official statistics, and it's more accurate than official statistics. That's great, but it's no use to investors. Financial markets react to official data releases, and generally speaking, they react to the first official data release, which is by definition the least accurate data available. Financial markets do not tend to react to more accurate data that is published subsequently in revisions. So unless big data is accurately predicting the errors in the initial data release, big data is not going to predict the information that markets will react to. The second problem with big data is that big data is very, very broad, but it's not very deep. The breadth of information, hundreds of thousands of different sources, is big data's great advantage, but it also excludes certain groups in society. If you want to be captured in big data, you're going to have to have access to electronic money, credit cards, debit cards, bank accounts. You're going to have to have regular access to the internet and use it for e-commerce. Lots of groups in society don't have those things. The lower income groups, less developed societies, the elderly are not likely to be captured in proportion to their role in society. Those groups being excluded from big data, but not excluded from official statistics, means that we have to be very careful in translating big data in a macroeconomic sense through to the big picture of the overall economy. None of this means that big data should be ignored. Big data is hugely helpful at corporate level analysis and in adding to our understanding about the macroeconomy. But we must be careful and precise in our interpretation of big data. That means, of course, we need more economists to understand the increasing universe of data that big data opens up for us. On which point, gardening leave is over. I'm back to the day job. Thanks very much for watching.